everyone, Vicki here with Avante Avenue. I sold a couple of fragile items and I sold them, this is the exciting part, I sold them in less than two hours. Actually, I think it might have been an hour. I listed these strawberry shortcake, little sugar bowl with lid, and this little creamer on Macari. I listed on eBay and Macari. It sold on Macari in less than two hours for $24 plus shipping and they need to go FedEx. FedEx is the best deal right now for uh, shipping these type of items and I'm going to show you how I package it to make sure that it gets there safely. So I'm going to change the camera angle and show you what I'm going to do to prep this little set for shipping. My first tip is this. If you are concerned about packing fragile items and you're afraid you're going to break them as you work with them, and I'm working on my granite countertop here, this is just a padded dish mat that I picked up. And it's for my dishes, and I don't always use this, but I don't always wrap things on my granite either. So put a little pad down to work on, or these are little jewelry uh, making pads. I use this all the time because I do handcraft jewelry and that would work too. And I also like to use these when I'm listing and working with jewelry that has rhinestones and things. So I'm going to use this little mat and I'm going to start with this sugar bowl. And the very first thing I do is see this void in here. See this opening, of course, every sugar bowl, every cup, every glass has an area that is, I call it a void. And in that I need to put some tissue paper to make sure that if this gets bumped around, there's some resistance to this hollow area. So let me grab some tissue paper here and show you what I mean. So this is just some regular tissue paper. And I'm going to stuff this little bowl. Now, I'm pu pushing it down. It still has room. It can take some more. It doesn't quite need another full piece. So I need to cut this piece. Let me grab my scissors. Okay, I'm going to cut this piece so that I can finish filling the bowl and I'll have some tissue paper left that I can use for something else. I can't stress enough how important it is to do this stuff. I've shipped fragile items for over a decade on eBay and I also sell now on Macari and Poshmark. So this has a little void too. I actually think I'm going to cut a little piece and fill this area. Okay, put some in there. Now I have two choices here. I can either package it like this, but that is taking a risk that the buyer opens it and the lid falls off and breaks because I didn't realize I did that. So I actually prefer to wrap the lid separately. And this is another vulnerable area. This little lid here has the little handle and that's very vulnerable. And so I have to make sure that, you know, sometimes I would take my tissue paper like this on the corner and wrap around here and give that a little extra protection. This is a very small handle, but I am still going to wrap that around there and put a little piece of tape to give that a little bit of protection. Before I finish wrapping the lid, I'm going to see how much tissue paper it takes to fill the opening or the void in the creamer. I have a feeling it might take two whole pieces. I'm packing it down. I still have quite a bit of room. I think it's going to take two whole pieces to secure this. There we go. Now I feel good about that. Now, I have a handle here, and that handle is very fragile. It's very vulnerable. So I'm going to take some bubble wrap and I have some small bubble wrap here and I'm going to cut a piece, I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to protect that handle. So I'm going to just fold my bubble wrap in half, fold it again. I don't want to put any pressure on the handle, but I want to put something inside there to again, create some resistance should this get jostled around during shipping, and I'm just going to tape that. I've learned that it's better to just use some regular uh, household tape rather than my packing tape for this. I don't want to make it too difficult, 
for my buyer to take this apart because if they yank at this, they can actually break it. Okay, I've got this little lid and I think I wanna wrap it one more time in tissue paper so I need to cut another piece. So I cut another little piece of tissue paper and I'm just going to roll and tuck the tissue paper in on this little lid, a little piece of tape. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I want to protect the finish on the item that I'm getting ready to mail. So this needs to go into another piece of tissue paper. You can use a lot of tissue paper when you are selling fragile items. So I'm going to give that a wrap with a little piece of tape. I'm going to give the sugar bowl a wrap. Now, there's other layers to come. These are not the only layers that I'm using. Okay, sugar bowl, sugar bowl lid, and the creamer. But this isn't enough to protect it. What's tissue paper going to do when I put this in a box and it gets dropped five or six feet or tossed or who knows what, jostled around in the truck? So I need to also bubble wrap these. And I've got some small bubble wrap. Wrap the creamer first. And I'm going to just roll this and tape it. And I don't mind if the ends stick out because that gives me more protection. You know, these here will help add some protection to the bottom, so I leave those little wings, you might say, stick out. Okay, it's one wrap. Let me do one wrap on the sugar bowl. Get some more bubble wrap here. Using two pieces, this is 12 by 12 small bubble. I love large bubble, but I don't have much of it right now. Okay, again, I'm going to Fold the end in, and I'm going to let those corners or wings stick out. Hope you can see this okay. Okay, and then I have the lid, and I have a half sheet of bubble that I'm hoping will work okay for this. Just regular scotch, not scotch, but regular transparent tape. Be any brand you want. Okay, so, you know what? It looks like, oh, it's good to go, right? No, it's not good to go. We need to add some more layers. And I'm not sure what size box this is going to fit in yet. I think I'm gonna wait and see how they turn out before I put it in, decide what size box. Let me get my wrapping paper. What I have here is a two sheets of plain, Newspaper print. Newspaper print is very heavy, nice thick paper. And I have two large sheets. I can't even begin to tell you. I think they're, gosh, uh, maybe 36 by 30 inches. And I picked this up at my local hardware store. It comes in a large ream. It is in the packing, shipping and packing department where you find the boxes. I think it was around $10 for a large ream. I'm not sure how many sheets are in there. I don't, I don't have the label anymore but I'm going to take a sheet of this 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 is what's going to enable me not to use another uh, layer of bubble wrap if I did not have this type of paper I would need to put more bubble wrap on here fold it in roll it up give it a little bit of tape tape and I think that one's good to go that was the sugar bowl this is the creamer I'm sure this sounds really nice on the ears if you're listening with a headset but it takes what it takes okay now I have this little lid and I need some paper for that so let me cut another sheet. I knew I didn't need a whole sheet, so I just cut down a quarter sheet. I cut it in half and cut it in half again. And I'm just using a quarter of a sheet of the 
uh, plain wrapping paper and that should be good. I see my tape isn't sticking here. Let's give it another little piece on these. Okay, what size box am I going to fit these in? Hmm, I have two available. Uh, these I bought off the internet. These are nine by nine by nine. And sometimes I've mentioned to you about the rating on a box. This one here has the ECT. ECT means edge crush test. See that here, edge crush test at 32 pounds. That means this box is rated that it can handle 32 pounds of pressure. And that is a great type of box to use for shipping on any of your venues, eBay, Macari, Poshmark, Etsy, wherever you ship. This You want to have a rated box. You want it to be corrugated. Let me show you here. Like this, this is an outer shipping box, not an inner shipping box. And how I know that is because the box is rated. If it doesn't have a rating on the box, I wouldn't trust using it to ship in. The other box I have, this is a company that's out of business. I pick up these boxes. This is an 11 by 9 by 8. And this one is rated also 32 pounds, if you see it there. So either one is good. I'm going to try to use the smaller box. But actually though, when I think, when I look at this, and I put these side by side and this one here, let me get my measuring tape. I'm looking at about 12 inches. Now this is going FedEx. I'm not worried about the 12 inch dimension. So you know what? I'm just gonna change my thought process and go with the 11 by nine by eight box with this. I'm gonna get this assembled. I always make the bottom of the box first. I fold in the two flaps, the shorter flaps and the longer flaps. It has the rating on the outside of the box. I'm going to let that show. And before I can tape that bottom, I go ahead and press in the top so that I can lay this upside down. It's very hard to tape a box. Okay, so I've got it upside down, pushed together. I have my, my shipping tape. Holding this together, pressing it as I go, and one the full length and one the opposite direction is good enough. And I'm probably before I'm going to ship this, I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to uh, block out this company. As I said, that was a company when I lived in Ohio and they're no longer in business. So I've got my box, my 11 by 9 by 8. Well, I can't just put these in here like this. What if I did that? What if I just put those in there? What do you think is going to happen? Look at all that space that's left over. What do you think is going to happen to those items? I need to protect it a little more. You can do one of two things. You can either put some large bubble wrap in the bottom, but I'm not paying the shipping on this. I know my shipping is good, that I'm covered, because Macari had one to three pounds in the shipping that I had to choose. So I am just going to take some more of my uh, plain packing paper and I'm going to put some in the bottom. Okay, I've got my sheets of packing paper here and I'm going to just wrap this up. I'm ready to put my first item in here and I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to put my next little wrap uh, I don't know if it's a sugar bowl or creamer anymore, and I'm going to lay that down so it's laying on a cushion. And then I have this little guy that I'm going to lay on top in the middle that I'm going to add some more packing material. If these were items that I was worried about getting wet, I would have put the, each of these in a plastic bag. But because they are porcelain, I'm not worried about that. I'm just concerned about making sure they don't shift around in the box. And I have a little thank you that I, I make. I make these little sheets. Um, just, you know, labels, mailing labels, and make a little sheet that says thank you. And I'm going to put this on top of one of the uh, packages inside. And then I'm going to take some more tissue or some more packing paper and tuck this in all around so these do not shift within the box. I cut another sheet in half. And I'm tucking that down around the sides. I want, to, wait, I want to make sure that everything is protected on every side, bottom, and top. 
You might say, oh, it's done. No, it's not. Why is it not done? Because there's still space in here. That means the whole thing could ship. Look at that. I have about an inch of space. I need another sheet of packing material. Now the box is secure. Nothing is going to shift inside here. Now, if you don't have this kind of packing material, use gift wrap paper, save it after Christmas, but I try to use things that are not Santa. I choose snowmen or snowflakes or something. You can recycle Christmas gift wrap, any seasonal gift wrap. Um, you can pretty much use anything you want, but you have to keep in mind, paper adds a lot of weight, but bubble wrap is harder for me to get these days as far as I used to order four, I don't know, humongous rolls of bubble wrap and I would go pick it up, but I don't have that resource here in Tennessee yet. I'm going to have to though. Okay, this is ready to be taped. And this is really good to go. I have to apply the label and I'm gonna take it down to our scale in the basement and I'm gonna show you what it weighs even though I don't really have to worry about the weight. And I'm going to mark out, just so everyone knows, the buyer and everybody else along the way, that this is not what's in here. There are wider markers. You can use what you want. I'm just trying to send a message. There's nothing on the ends that that's not what is in this box. I'm in my basement and I have my box and I'm going to put it on the scale just for fun to see what it weighs. Now this was a Mercari sale and I had the buyer use a FedEx label, at least I offered FedEx label and it covered one to three pounds. I knew it would be over one pound, but I'm going to put it on the scale just to see what it does weigh with all this packing material in here. So let's take a look. It's coming in at 2.05 pounds. I am good to go. I will put the label on this and get it in the mail and I'll take it to a FedEx drop-off location. Mine happens to be a Walgreens not too far away. So let's get let's get this mailed. If you like these type of videos I appreciate a thumbs up, a like and subscribe and ring that little bell so you will receive notifications on future videos.